And there's been five states that have already passed Health Care Freedom Acts, saying, and recently Missouri just had a vote on a Health Care Freedom Act. It's not the strongest legislation in the world, but it's getting the ball rolling. We're saying in our own communities, in our own towns, in our own cities, in our own states, no, these laws should not apply to us and we will not allow them to apply to us. And the reality is, is when enough people say no to the federal government and enough states pass laws saying no to the federal government, the federal government is not going to be able to enforce their unconstitutional mandates on us. Does anybody here know who Roscoe Filburn was? Oh, great. Roscoe Filburn was a farmer during the Great Depression. Wheat farmer. Well, that great constitutional president, FDR, that's a joke. <laughs> An obvious one. Well, FDR was more interested in keeping prices up. You know, uh, it was their version of uh, federal bailouts back then. They wanted to make sure that pricing for the big uh, corporations were nice and high. Well, so what they did was they limited, they, they said that uh, farmers could only grow a certain amount of wheat. I think it was like 10 acres, something like that. So Roscoe grew his 10 acres and he sold it on the open market. Did what he could. It was less than what he was doing before, so he was struggling. So he grew another 10-ish. <laughs> but he didn't sell it. He used it to feed his livestock, his home, his family. It never left his own property. Well, what did the federal government do? I mean, it's, I think it's pretty obvious. They came in and they said, you need to destroy your crops when millions of people were out of work, hungry, needing food. This is what government does. They come in and say, destroy the food. So they told him he had to destroy the food and pay, to pay a fine. Well, Roscoe is like, are you kidding me? This is not interstate commerce, as you're claiming. And he sued. It goes all the way to the Supreme Court. And in a famous case, which is giving us many problems today, it was called Wickard versus Filburn, good Roscoe lost. And the federal government claimed the power to control a plant grown in your backyard, consumed in your backyard, as somehow interstate commerce. And when you ask someone like Nancy Pelosi today, where do you guys get the power to do this Obamacare nonsense? I mean, yeah, right, if she even dignifies us with an answer, her holy highness, she'll giggle and say, well, the Commerce Clause, of course. Well, it all comes from this Wickard versus Filburn. And a few more. John Adams gave us a really great warning. He said, liberty once lost is lost forever. He didn't mean that uh, things are hopeless. In context of what he was saying, he was basically saying that when you allow the federal government the power to take your rights for some emergency, and obviously the Depression was an emergency, we could get into that in a different discussion caused by government, but um, it was an emergency, so people were allowing the federal government additional power. Well, Adam said, when you do that, you're never going to get it back. They're not just going to volunteer the power back. Thanks for giving us all this new power to control you and tell you what to do. Uh, yeah, I don't like that power. You have it. You, you guys can be free. Well, it never happens. Uh, the income tax was temporary. I mean, everything is temporary with these guys. It's an emergency measure. That means we want to oppress you. Well, if we fast forward, to the 1990s. My state of California, well, oh yeah. <laughs> I thought Texas was gonna welcome me. I've been telling, I called my girlfriend and I said, honey, I've never met more friendly people than I have in Texas. I feel very at home. Well, thank you. I don't want you to bail us out either. I think California should be bankrupt. Thank you. Get rid of them. Well, I'm often told that if you, when you talk to a crowd, if you don't piss off a few people, you are not challenging their, their mode of thought. I've done that good. Hopefully I will again. 
I'm not here, I'm not a campaigner, I'm not running for office, I'm telling you things that I believe, and this is what we're doing. You take it and do what you think is best with it. Some of you say that is nonsense. These guys are idiots. Fine. But we're here to share with you, you with what we believe. And now back to the story, Roscoe. If we fast forward, California, uh, yeah, I don't know if you guys remember, but back in the mid-90s, they passed this law saying Californians can smoke weed. Someone likes it. I don't, I don't fancy it's too, uh, too popular a thing here in Texas, but that's fine. The reality is the Constitution delegates certain things to the federal government, and it allows the states to be idiots if they want to. So if California wants to make marijuana legal, they, they, they can. I mean, you don't have to agree with it. But the point is, is they did this, and of course the federal government, it doesn't even matter if it's a more progressive or a liberal view, Obviously, legalizing medical marijuana is not a conservative talking point. Well, the federal government didn't even like that. They do not like challenges to their authority, so they still pressed and they said, no, supremacy clause, commerce clause, we can control you because we say so, and you've been allowing it for too long. Well, what happened? A lady named Angel Rach, she had a tumor in the size of her head, like the size of a baseball or something, really big. Well, she determined that she wanted to use marijuana to alleviate some of that. Her doctor said, and the California voters said, well, we're going to allow it in our state. Like it or not, the reality is that's how it worked, and that's how the founders said it should work. Well, of course, federal agents come to her home, and she's got her six cannabis plants in her backyard that she never sold or bought or anything, just grew and smoked. They came and destroyed them. So Angel said, Wow, this is the only thing that makes me get into another world where I can function with this tumor, is this weed. So I'm going to go to court. Well, we knew how that worked with Roscoe, but she tried it. And it went all the way to the Supreme Court in an, another famous case, giving the Pelosi's and the Reeds and the rest of them the power that they have today, Gonzalez versus Rach. The Supreme Court said that a plant grown in your backyard and consumed in your backyard was somehow engaging in interstate commerce. And so they could tell you what to do, they could put you in jail if they want, they could fine you, they could destroy your property. So it doesn't matter if it's wheat, or if it's corn, or if it's radishes, or if it's weed. They're going to do it to you. Probably children too. And that's sad. Well, Clarence Thomas if I can find my note here, he had an amazing quote on this. Well, I'll just paraphrase. He said, basically, if the federal government can regulate or control the growth of six plants in someone's backyards as interstate commerce, their power is limitless. So whether it's guns or rummage sales or uh, cookie fests at your local church, they're going to claim the power to do anything and no government can be trusted with this power. Obviously, this is a paraphrase. I don't think he mentioned anything about cookies. But the reality is correct. Clarence Thomas, this was the dissenting opinion. He said, this is bad news, guys. Watch out for it. So what's the point of this? It's really pretty simple. The Constitution is not about political parties. It's not about political ideologies. It's not about political candidates. It's not about politics at all. The Constitution is about liberty. It's about limiting the federal government to certain enumerated powers so we can deal with the most difficult, the most divisive, the most problematic issues where they belong close to home in our states.